Thank you very much. We're talking to you now from the, though you may not be able to see it too clearly, the inside of a pressure chamber on the Oklahoma City University campus here, obviously, in Oklahoma City. And this chamber is used to test fellows for, see how high they can go, or as far as that's concerned, how deep they can go. Testing for bends as they go down through the ocean, testing up as high as the limitations of space will allow uh, on the inside. And here, a young gentleman going through various and sundry tests. I don't know which one this is. Obviously, pulse, breathing, and so on. And these are just a, a small portion of the many tests that go on in today's flight preparations. I'd like for you to meet our, our next guest, a man who was actually, during the uh, first phases of the X-15 program, flight surgeon, I believe. Is that right, Dr. Yes, Freeman? Sir. For uh, Scott Crossfield and the X-15 program. Scott Crossfield we had on the program just recently, as you know. Yes, that's right. He said that the only problem today is that... Uh, you heard him. What did he say? <laughs> that we're wearing him out with exercises, huh? No, I think he said something like the only problem today is that uh, there are not too many old test pilots, but too many old flight surgeons. Oh, that's right. And he made reference to you. Uh, so let's clear that up. Do you have any answer for it? <laughs> well, I am trying to get in shape. See, Scott used to take my uh, pulse before each flight he made, and if my pulse was okay, he flew. <laughs> I hope he hears that. What's your current position, Dr. Freeman? I'm uh, with North American Space Division as the Director of Life Science for the Apollo program. What is the Director of Life Science? You'll have to explain that to me. Yes, well, our principal interest is in uh, the health, safety, and welfare of the three-man crew that will eventually go to the moon on a, about a 14-day trip. And this involves the life support systems and uh, the provisions for the crew and working out the uh, protective devices. The Apollo program is the one that's designed for the moon, I know. When, uh, is there any offhand uh, time that we can look forward to? Yes, uh, we hope that sometime uh, in the middle of the decade we will have reached the Earth orbital phase where we'll check out the hardware and the man and then uh, eventually go to the stage where we will go around the moon and then eventually actually do the landing and return. And this, the hope is to do this uh, prior to the end of the decade. Is the United States at the moment uh, partially, even partially aware of the pilots that they may be selecting? Or are we, let me put it this way, bluntly, are we selecting pilots for possible moon trip? Well, I would say that there are many activities going on that are related to this. They have a space pilot school at Edwards Air Force Base. Uh, NASA has a very systematic program going involving selection and training. And uh, there is some talk, in fact, that these uh, people may not all be pilots, that they may have some scientists along in the crew. But this has not been decided, to my knowledge. What kind of problems are you running across physically, let's say, physically and mentally? I assume you get into both areas with the... Uh, a man that might be going to the moon. Well, uh, I was going to mention that, that uh, actually in sending these people, uh, I have devoted uh, most of my energies to getting them ready to go and uh, that I probably will not be riding as a passenger. Being a devout coward, I will <laughs> leave Crossfield to go to the moon, you see. <laughs> but uh, as far as selecting uh, these people, uh, we have a very uh, extensive battery of techniques, some of which uh, is this type of thing, to evaluate their physiological capacity, and there is uh, specific attention paid to their psychological makeup, and all of these things are integrated and weighed, and uh, these people are selected on that basis. However, I must say that fortunately, many of these people in a sense, have selected us, that uh, people, for example, like Crossfield, happen to be unusual people who are unusually well motivated. This is a man who is not only, who was not only a pilot, but uh, has a master's degree in aeronautical engineering, and who happens to withstand this stress 
very well, naturally, I would say. So our problem has not been quite as vast as if we had to stop, I mean, start at a, uh, without any guide or without any uh, people who sought us out, so to speak. I think uh, he put it uh, very well in the recent interview we did with him on the TP show, and that uh, it was desire that counted extremely, like as we said before, Coach Bud Wilkinson demands in his football players. What is your uh, educational background, Dr. Freeman? I attended Stanford uh, University Medical School and then uh, took postgraduate work in internal medicine at Los Angeles County General Hospital, then entered the Air Force and uh, what became a flight surgeon in the Air Force and then subsequently went to North American. So my background is both internal medicine and aviation medicine. Have you delved in your education into outer space, the moon? Yes. Uh, the Nowadays, uh, it requires an interdisciplinary approach, and this life science group works very closely with other basic scientists, astrophysicists, astronomers, and so forth. I don't pretend to have mastered these fields, but you must be able to talk to the engineers, the pilots, the uh, physicists, and so forth. It is only by supreme team effort that all of these problems can be overcome. The reason I ask that question is I'm wondering if you delve into the pilot's mind to the extent that you might explain to him some of the problems that he will encounter physically, mentally, and so on as he is uh, so long in space and, uh, and in the moon area. Yes, I would say uh, that the basic patient-doctor relationship of mutual trust still prevails in this situation, and that without this, uh, we could not accomplish the task, and that obviously it is necessary for flight surgeons in general to appreciate the physical environment and the problems involved to talk the pilot's language. And it's been traditional in this field for these men to, the flight surgeons, to participate. For example, Dr. Lovelace made the original free fall from 40,000 feet in a parachute. Uh, Colonel Stapp is famous for the work he has done on the sled and so forth. So there is this both mutual trust and the participation of the flight surgeon so that he understands the problems and can reduce them to some uh, area for mutual discussion. Are you also involved in the design of the s uh, space suit, I'll call it, itself, from a medical standpoint? Yes. Uh, we uh, worked uh, with uh, Crossfield in this area, and actually uh, in the X-15 program, it was analogous to the same sort of work that has been done with the Mercury astronauts in that a suit development program paralleled the design and development of the X-15 and that Crossfield went through extensive simulation with uh, electronic simulators, uh, centrifuge work, pressure chambers. We cooked them and froze them and exploded them and so forth. And this in itself was an extremely rigorous program. What does the Apollo program, uh, Dr. Freeman, Dr. Toby Freeman, what does this call for? Uh, you, I heard you say earlier we were going to circle the moon. Now, does this mean that we will circle it and return or circle it, land and return? The uh, so-called circumlunar portion of it, or circling the moon, as you mentioned, is considered to be the second phase and would be preliminary to, or let us say in preparation for an actual landing. The goal of this particular project is actual landing and safe return. But prior to landing, they will circle the moon, check out their equipment, their navigational techniques, and then actually return. So this must be considered as a step in a very carefully planned logical continuum, just as the X-15, the Mercury, and so forth are leading up to this activity. I'm wondering now, uh, you say that we plan this around, the, around 1965, so in that area? In that area. Uh, in about 30 seconds, Dr. Freeman, can you tell me, uh, to your knowledge, how do the Russians compare with the same program, this Earth to Moon and Back program? Unfortunately, I have no definite intelligence. I think, though, that this might be a good opportunity to point out that our own program is far more extensive and would appear to be 
more carefully worked out and linked with other scientific endeavors such as communications, weather determination, the uh, determination of material, and so forth. There appears to be less of a brute force approach concentrating on one or more spectacular areas, and that this venture would appear to be less of a stunt and more of a concentrated effort to have a composite, conjoined program that will lead to many scientific advances simultaneously. It would seem to me, Dr. Freeman, that when we shoot this man into space to the moon and return, that a part of you will go with him, huh? I hope so. I hope so, too. Thank you, Doctor. It's been a pleasure talking to you. This is Dr. Toby Freeman, or Friedman. I have been calling you Freeman, F-R-E-E-D-M-A-N. Friedman, who was the flight surgeon for the X-15 pilot, Scott Crossfield, and went through the very first phases of that program, now involved on the future trip to the moon. Thank you again, Dr. Friedman.